All right, so we're taking a look at popular IAC tools. Um, and so, of course, this course is about Terraform, but by understanding um, all the options out there, we can understand why we're using Terraform. Uh, and one thing that is very important to understand is the difference between declarative and imperative IAC tools. Those are the broad categories um, that we see uh, for IAC. So let's start with declarative. So the idea here is what you see is what you get. Everything's explicit. It's more verbose, but there's zero chance of misconfiguration. And this all relies on the fact that they use a scripting language like, such as JSON, YAML, XML. In the case of Terraform, they have their own language called HCL. But the uh, way these languages are structured is that they're very verbose um, and there's not a lot of programming logic involved. Um, so for Azure, we have ARM templates and Azure Blueprints. For AWS, we have CloudFormation. For Google, we have Cloud Deployment Manager. And there, there is, of course, Terraform, which has many cloud service providers such as AWS, Azure, GCP, Kubernetes, and a lot more. But these are all in the declarative category. On the right-hand side, we have Imperative. So you say what you want and the rest is filled in. Everything here is implicit. Uh, it's less verbose, uh, but you could end up with misconfiguration. And when I say that, it's that like if you were to find, um, let's say a virtual machine, you might not have to provide every single uh, option that you would normally do and that it would fill in the rest. But if you weren't aware of what it was doing, that's where you could end up with misconfiguration. Uh, though I would say that imperative tools uh, generally try to always uh, uh, have their defaults as best practices. So you're not usually in a bad position, uh, but you know you might end up with something you don't expect. Uh, imperative can do more than declarative. So there's just some very hard uh, limitations with declarative languages. Uh, so there's just cases where you want to do imperative. Uh, and the idea here is imperative languages use programming language you know, like Python, Ruby, JavaScript, Golang, you know, whatever it is, uh, there's likely an SDK for it. Uh, and so it's just a lot more um, programmer friendly. A lot of developers like imperative tools. Um, so AWS has their own called Cloud Development Kit, CDK, and it technically only supports uh, AWS. And I say technically because HashiCorp has a very cool library that allows you to generate out uh, Terraform HCL files, which allows you to work with anything. But when we're just talking about CDK on its own, it's just for um, AWS. Then you have Plumi. It supports AWS, Azure, GCP, uh, and Kubernetes. Um, so it can do a lot. So why would you choose with your team to use declarative over imperative? Well, it just really depends on your um, your team, right? So like if they're all used to, if they're all administrators and they're used to using JSON YAML and they're not good with programming languages, uh, that is one reason why you might want to use declarative over imperative. Um, the other thing is just, you know, you prefer to know exactly every single thing that was defined, right? You don't want anything uh, left up to, uh, a chance. And so that is another reason why you might want to use declarative, but both are great options. It just really depends on your team's knowledge and what your goals are. Okay.